You know something? I'm hungry. So, how about we make some food? First, let me take off the guitar. And then we can make some food. Tonight, I'm in the mood for what I refer to as breakfast cake. And in order to make breakfast cake, we have to... First, we have 18 beaten eggs. We also, we also have cheese. We have bits and pieces of dead cow. And we also have vegetables. On top of that, we also have some stuffing. Now, along with the stuffing, well, we could use a whole bunch of saltine crackers instead of the stuffing, but I'm in the mood for, and you know, just add some herbs and spices and stuff. But these crackers were uh, supposed to be sold, to, and the sell by date was two months ago, so I'm not going to be using these. However, I am going to be using the stuffing. Now, in order. Now one thing to do with the stuffing is, uh, which comes with its own herbs and spices, is to smash them. One thing that's really good for smashing is this giant piece of concrete. You take that and you roll, roll, smash, and pulverize, and turn it over, and just Just like a steamroller. There. This, by the way, is also good for opening cans when you don't have a can opener. I'll show you that some other time. So, basically, that means that all the uh, four basic food groups are being represented again. We have the bread group. We have well, we have our eggs, of course, as so does uh, the poultry pork version. And let's see, our vegetables, which contain, uh, let's see, carrots, potatoes, celery, sweet peas, green beans, corn, and lima beans. I have already opened these up to save time. And some more. Take our unused sporks and stir it up a bit. After that, of course, we're going to be uh, adding the, the bread group and all sorts of herbs and spices and stuff. Which herbs and spices? I don't know. But at least it's in there. And just mix it around. Do, 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 do. Yes, I know it's actually a little bits and pieces of steak, but I like calling things what they are.
Right, and finally, we got our cheeses. Uh, by the way, it's uh, mozzarella and uh, nice cheddar. Yeah. Not the sharp cheddar, uh, uh, oh, mild, that's what they call it. And, gotta mix that up. Do, 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 do. Okay, there. And, uh, and we're gonna put it in this big old pot which I have already buttered up. So, 18 eggs, a bunch of pieces of dead cow, our bread stuffing with all sorts of herbs and stuffing, uh, uh, spices, and uh, cheese, and uh, yeah, that's the four basic, oh, oh yeah, and our, of course our vegetables. That's all for the basic food groups. And we're just going to pour it in here. to somewhere between medium and medium high for about half an hour. Now oh, we're going to cover it. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going to tell you a nice little story. Uh, I love West Virginia. However, before I discovered the wonder that is West Virginia, a very funny story happened. Well, it's only funny in hindsight. I was, uh, I, I, back in 2009, it was the 4th of July weekend, and uh, I was driving up to Michigan to uh, see my grandma, who I hadn't seen since 1992, and also my aunt and my uncle, whom I also hadn't seen since 1992, and they live up in Sheboygan. Now, you know, say this is Michigan. Uh, some people say that this is Michigan, but uh, there's a this thing called the Upper Peninsula. A lot of people forget about it, that part, but I don't, because I'm a nice guy. Anyway, so Sheboygan is not exactly there. It's it there. And uh, it takes, well, it took me about 18 hours for me to drive from, uh, you know, uh, near Raleigh, North Carolina to get up to there and of course I had to pass through West Virginia. So while I was driving through West Virginia I, you know, that there were all these signs saying uh, the, uh, that the speed is uh, controlled by uh, aircraft you know, so, and so in other words there's supposed to be helicopters and all sorts of other things and uh, you know that uh, make sure that you're going to the speed limit. Now I don't want to get any kind of speeding ticket in uh, anywhere, especially when I'm in a hurry. Uh, so I decided to stay in the slow lane and drive two or three miles under the speed limit. Now there's only two, there's only two lanes in, you know, going my direction. And so there's quite a few bunch of people passing me up. Some people were giving me, you know, some people were blowing their horns, some people were giving me the finger, and it's like, hey, excuse me, I just don't want a ticket. You know, you want to pass me up? You want to go faster? Go around, go around, go around, go around. It's, it's easy as that. Uh, that's why I'm in the slow lane. There was this one car that stayed behind me for at least 80 miles because th this person showed up before I went through the first of three toll booths. It was a faded red, aerodynamically shaped 80s model car and the license plate, instead of being in between, you know, it's like here's one wheel, here's the other, and the license plate is right here. It was over, er, over there. 
and now people are passing me up and this person is staying right behind me and every time I change the lane this person stayed right with me and I would change back and this person stayed right with me sometimes getting you know tailgating me and sometimes I would you know hit the brakes to say hey excuse me uh, and maybe the person will fall back now this gets a little bit creepy after a while this person is uh, and some people might think it's kind of, you know, kind of paranoid, you know, to say, oh, well, this person's been following me all this time. And there's a guy I used to work with that, if we happened to be at the same intersection, I knew that he would blaze a trail through the traffic, so I would get right behind him because he would blaze a trail and we would get to, uh, you know, work on time if we were running late. And if I happened to be ahead, then he would get behind me and I would blaze the trail. You know, kind of like, uh, you know, like pilots, you know, following each other home, you know, or, you know, maybe if you're in a sci-fi movie and you're flying spaceships, uh, you know, it's like, take us home, you know. But we get to at least one toll booth, and there's ten toll booths, and there's a good ten toll booths, and I go here, and then everybody goes over there, and this person goes, like, way over here, and everybody dissipates. Right after everybody finishes paying, everybody's going and uh, conjoining back into the two lanes. This person gets right behind me again. Okay, this is creepy. Um, now some people, uh, as I mentioned before, it sounds, it sounds kind of paranoid. Uh, say, oh, well, this person's following me. And, you know, maybe they just like the way you're driving. It's just like uh, you and your co-worker. Uh, when this is going for over 40 miles, and in fact, you know, it's at 80 miles, uh, if you want to talk about this person just likes the way you're driving, well, why don't you just uh, get yourself a Ouija board and, uh, uh, you know, call up those two civil rights workers who were working, who were driving through Mississippi back in the late 1950s or early 60s that disappeared. Yeah, um, so I feel like I'm Dennis Weaver in that movie Duel, you know, where he's being chased, chased by the, you know, big rusty truck and the big, and the driver is... You know, being really, really creepy, and you never actually get to see the driver, but, you know, he's... Ugh. And, uh, you know, I, I look through my rearview mirror, and I'm thinking, you know, is this person a guy or a girl? You know, what, what happens if I might have to do some kind of fight? And and the other side of my brain's like, you know, what does it matter if there's a guy or a girl? A maniac is a maniac! So I drive a little faster, and I be, manage to, you know, Written, you know, read backwards the license plate, and you know, I can't write it on my, you know, hand, in case, uh, you know, in case anything happen, thing happens, and the cops will have a clue to look for. Just look for LLC something 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 something, and uh, you know. Finally, after even the third toll booth, you know, dissipating, coming back, <laughs> right behind me, another toll booth, dissipating, right behind me, <laughs> you know. Finally, this person gets off. And uh, it suddenly occurs to me that uh, I have all these bumper stickers on the back of my car, all to police charities. Wouldn't it be silly if the person actually thought I was a cop and uh, didn't want to pass me up because I might uh, pull them over? <laughs> and it, because nobody wants to pass up a cop. What if they thought I was a cop? And, uh, you know, so I kind of chuckle about it. And I go, you know, to Michigan and see everybody that I hadn't seen since, you know, like I said, 1992. And even some family members I haven't seen since the 70s, if I ever met them whatsoever. After that weekend's over and I'm coming back, I'm in the top portion of West Virginia. I get no more than two miles in before I suddenly notice this red dot in my rearview mirror. I'm thinking, wait a minute. It's a faded red, aerodynamically shaped, 80s model car with the license plate over here again. I'm thinking, no. You gotta be kidding me! No! No! Ah! Ah! Yeah, and I uh, read the license plate. It's a different license plate. Whew. The rest of the way through West Virginia, I certainly noticing, you know, look at this place. This place is amazing to look at. This is wonderful. This is a hidden place of magical beauty. I gotta come back here and wander sometime. A bunch of months later, I did come back and wander sometime. And I'll tell you about that in the next segment. <laughs>